Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another week of Outspoken Wheels on Wheels. This week, we're going to talk about my trip to Arizona. As you can see from my background, I'm actually back in Canada. Um, I had a really wonderful time on my trip, and a lot of the goals that I had for my trip were met. Um, I wanted to meet a lot of van lifers, and I wanted to meet some van life YouTubers as well. And I had good success on both those parts. So overall, it was a really great trip. Uh, let's look now at some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't work. Towards the end of my trip, I wanted to uh, go camp on the Colorado River. So I saw online that there was a campsite on the California side and I went over to check it out, didn't like it. There was actually um, one of the things I liked about what I read about the campsite was that there was a, um, a handicap access campsite while I went there. Somebody was parked there. It wasn't, I could tell it was the handicap one. It had a cement pad around the table and the table was extended out for um, wheelchair use. And somebody was parked there and so I wasn't able to use it. So a little bit frustrated about that. That would be one of the things that did not work about my trip. Um, or maybe just something that needs to have awareness brought to you that, you know, just because a campsite makes something accessible doesn't mean that it's going to work for somebody who needs that access, uh, especially if the, the sites aren't marked as disability access or ADA access. Um, it's just not practical the way it is because the campsite right next to it that was just as nice as the one that this camper was parked in was empty so that camper could have been over there and I could have actually parked there for the night but I kept on going so anyways this video that you're looking at right now is me crossing back into Nevada over the Colorado River on the Parker Dam well On my way home, I left Lake Havasu this morning about 6.30 BC time in the morning and I've been driving through Nevada all day, it feels like it's 1 o'clock and I don't know which time that is, whether that's Pacific or Mountain or whatever. But anyways, so going home not as easy as I was hoping that it would be. I've been on the phone with two different pharmacies trying to figure out how to get my COVID test so that I can cross the border because you can't cross the border without it. So I need an American address. I don't have one, so I plugged in the pharmacy address. And I need, it seems like an American driver's license. And I don't have the right number for that, so it'll never let me complete the online application. And you have to do it online. So, I have no clue how you're supposed to go and get a COVID test if you're not an American. So, I'm going to go, I had aimed to get to Twin Falls tonight in Idaho, but I kind of like it to make it to Boise so that get my test then I can just start heading home. Okay well I'm back home now and I just wanted to add to what I said about the COVID testing and how much trouble I was having um, getting a COVID test done in order to cross back into Canada on a land border. I think other ways too but by a land border you have to have a COVID test, a negative COVID test that you can show proof of when you get to the border. Well, I was having a horrible time finding that. So just as a point of information, if you are also trying to do that or are going to be doing that in the future, I just wanted to let you know that um, the things that I learned from that was that, uh, one, find a urgent care center that has a lab in it because I had my results. I went to the American Family Care Urgent Care Center and uh, they were able to get my results done in 30 minutes, 
you just tell them what kind of test you want and you need to make sure you look that up uh, on the ArriveCan app. You have to have the ArriveCan app so that they can look it up when you get to the border. Um, I can possibly do a whole video on this maybe next time if I can't think of something else to do now that I'm home for three months and won't be in my van again until uh, the middle, early May. Anyways, I just thought that might be helpful for anybody else who might be trying to cross back into Canada. So one of the things that I wanted to address that did not work very well for me in some of the BLM camping, and that was the surface of the ground. Uh, the rocks were huge and really difficult to wheel through. And because I get out of my van on one side and my kitchen's on the other, it actually limited how much cooking I did. I resolved that problem because it was just so difficult to wheel around the van. And the more I did it, the more I dug up the ground and the harder it got to move around. I solved this problem by buying myself a little tiny cook stove, a single burner cook stove, and cooked some meals on that when I wasn't able to get out of the van. So here's what I bought as an alternative. I have a two burner cook stove, which I really like because I don't want to have to cook if I'm making, say, spaghetti. I don't want to have to cook my noodles, let them get cold, and then cook the sauce or vice versa. So what I ended up purchasing, um, so I'm keeping the two burner stove. What I ended up purchasing for cooking inside, and this is really good, not just for when I can't get around at the campsite, but it's also really good uh, if I don't want to get out at night and I just want to have a cup of tea or a hot chocolate or something. So it's a Coleman brand. And I think it's called Peak. That's what it says on the, on the thing. And it just screws onto the top of a green canister, but you just flip these around and you put your pot on here and you screw it onto one of these regular um, one liter bottles. Okay, well that's it for this week. There was a couple of other things that I wanted to address, um, you know, just sort of where I put things in the van, but I think I'll wait for that until I'm back in my van and have everything sitting out and I can show you what I had done and, and what I, plan to do when I get moved back in. Uh, there were things like the drawers leaning because of the uneven floor and what I plan to do about that. Uh, I actually had some success with washing my hair, but I've actually purchased something else to um, help with that. So uh, that will be in a future video as well. Uh, pretty much everything else worked out fine except for the heat. It was cold in my van. Um, the desert gets really cold at night. And so after about seven o'clock at night, just sitting in my van without blankets all wrapped around me uh, was not great, but uh, I have purchased a new heater that will be arriving um, from Amazon. And I'll probably do a review on that when it arrives as well. So anyways, I'm excited about all the things that happened in Arizona. And I'm excited to tell you more. Uh, just one other point of interest, my house is sold. And so I will be moving um, early May into my van and I'll be a full timer. So anyways, we'll see you next week.